Thanks for watching the video. If you'd like to support the channel, please leave a like and subscribe. Thanks. In this video, we're going to look at who I think is going to win the Brownlow medal this year. Now, this isn't a definitive guide. These are just purely my my beliefs and a bit of stats behind them. I'll show you a little bit of the working that I've done. But I think there are six people who have a chance at winning the Brownlow this year. They are, of course, Lockie Neal, Clayton Oliver, Patrick Cripps, Andrew Brayshaw, Christian Petrarca, and Tuke Miller. I'm going to look at some footage. I'm going to show you who I think is going to be winning at round 5, 10, 15, 20, and then finally, who I think is going to win it all. So let's have a look together, and let me know what you think in the comments. Let's get to it. Up to round five was a pretty close race. Andrew Brayshaw showed us that he was here to play. He scored well and in round two he scored a massive 181 Dream Team points, which was the highest all year. Even though his team lost by 10 points, I still think he gets three votes here. Seeing him out there is Clark across to Brayshaw. Out wide for me. So this is my makeshift graph that I've made in Photoshop. I know I'm not the greatest at Photoshop, but just bear with me. As you can see here, we're going to tally up the Brownlow votes at the different rounds, round 5, round 10, round 15, round 20, and as we know, it goes up to round 23, but a lot happens in those last three games, so the winner may not be who you think it is. So, of course, you've got to stay around and watch the whole video, but what we're going to do is we're going to look at who's going to be in the lead by round 5, and it starts off as a very close race, and it slowly transitions to three main people who I think have a good chance at winning the Brownlow this year. As you can see here, I have Andrew Brayshaw in the lead, closely followed by Petrarca and then Patrick Cripps and Lockie Neal on seven. Petrarca is on eight, as you can see. Clayton Oliver had a pretty slow start to the year. He still got four votes by round five, which is still no mean feat. And Tuke Miller started with two. Now I know I said he's a chance at winning it this year, but his second half of the year was fantastic and he slowly catches up to the rest of the pack. So let's take a look at what happened between round 5 and round 10. All of my top 6 contenders scored at least 5 Brownlow votes by my count, but the one who stood out the most was Clayton Oliver. During rounds 5 to 10, he scored 9 Brownlow votes by my count, including a 41 disposal game in round 6 against Richmond, where he scored 129 Dream Team points. This puts him right back into it, and a very good chance at winning. Through the middle they go, and sadly, Neil Bullen has a bit of time and space. Harms was the runner, ran into short, bounced off him. Into the pocket, Pickett, Brown. Pickett ends up with a football, fires at goal, check side! As you can see, quite a bit has changed from round 5 to round 10. This now puts both Andrew Brayshaw and Lockie Neal in the lead by my vote by one point, closely followed by Patrick Cripps, Clayton Oliver and Christian Petrarca, all on 13. They are right there and the race for the Brownlow is very, very close. Next, we'll take a look at rounds 10 to 15 and see who performed well and what changes at the end of round 15. During rounds 11 to 15, everyone polled except for Patrick Cripps. The best performer during this time was again Clayton Oliver, including a round 13 loss to the Magpies where he scored 146 Dream Team points and 43 disposals. Again, his kick and handball ratio was 50-50, which is good to see from Oliver, as he usually handballs the ball off, which in my opinion shouldn't be that well regarded in disposals. He also had 614 metres gained. Overall, this was a great effort by him. The team didn't win, but I think he was very influential in kicking a goal and 43 disposals. I think he should get three votes for this. Well done, Oliver. That dumb kick from him to go is exactly what you don't want at that part of the ground. He had a little bit more time than he thought. Obviously, early part of this game, players feel like there's more pressure than there is. Brilliant kick in the end for Jordan. This game of footy today. Petty. Oliver. That shouldn't be play on. He didn't step off the line. He just faked with the hands. Now Oliver has to go as a result of that call. Brown, both hands on it. At the back. Fritch fell over. Payne got it in his back. Incorrect disposal. As you can see, after round 15, from my voting, I reckon there are three players who have started to break away from the pack. That's Andrew Brayshaw, Lockie Neal, 
and Clayton Oliver. I think these three, by round 15, have had outstanding games. They should poll pretty well, in my opinion. Even in losing games, they might not get the three votes, they might get two, but they've done really well, and I think these three are the leading chance to win the Brownlow. Next, we'll take a look at what happens between round 16 to round 20, and tally my votes, and see where we end up by round 20. During rounds 16 to 20, Clayton Oliver and Patrick Cripps played a few games, but I don't think they would have polled a huge amount of votes. They started to fall off a little bit. Lockie Neal, Christian Petrarca and Took Miller, I reckon, would have scored almost seven Brownlow votes each for round 16 to 20 after their great performances, only topped by Andrew Brayshaw who scored 8 points during round 16 to 20, especially after round 17 where he scored 144 Dream Team points, 1 goal, 36 disposals and 569 metres gained. All of this while he was on the ground 79% of the time. A lot of these players who get the 3 votes, get these sort of numbers, are on the ground 80 to 90% of the time. So his efficiency was elite here. He should definitely get three points, 301 by 41. Now there's only three rounds left. A lot changes in these last three rounds and I'll go through them slowly and let's see who I think is going to win at the very end of it. As you can see from my votes and Please do remember, these are my votes, that I have Andy Brayshaw at number one with 28 votes as of round 20. We still have three rounds to go. We have a Lockie Neal at 27, quite a few votes back. We have Clayton Oliver on 22, Christian Petrarca on 21, Tuke Miller at 20, and Patrick Cripps at 17. As you can see, this looks like a two horse race, but the last three games, as I said, changes everything. So let's see what happens in the last three rounds. By my count, Lockie Neal, Paddy Cripps, Andrew Brayshaw, Christian Petrarca and Took Miller all polled two votes for the last three rounds. That's rounds 21, 22, 23. All of them except for Clayton Oliver who I think should get eight points, possibly seven. I did give him three votes in a game that they lost but he was instrumental and he had 42 disposals in a game in a loss against Collingwood in round 21. I think his effort and intensity carried Melbourne a long way into the game. Unfortunately, they couldn't get the job done, but I still think he gets three votes, maybe two, but then let's see where this puts us right at the end of round 23, and let's see who my winner for the Brownlow is. And so, who is my winner? Well, at third, I think Andy Brayshaw gets it at 28 votes. I think he started off the year very well. Unfortunately, the last three games, I don't think he polls. So I think he will be first around that 20th round. But after that, I don't think he polls in the last three games. So unfortunately, I think that loses it for him. I think he ends up as third on 28 votes. In second place, I think Clayton Oliver wins it. I think he'll end up around that 29, 30 votes. Unfortunately, the start of his year was not that good. If he started the year the way he finished it, I think he would have won. Unfortunately, the start of the year for Clayton Oliver was not that good, but towards the end of the year, he had many 40-plus disposal games, which is very hard to overlook him, and I think he polls two to three votes for many of those games. And so that means, for me, the winner is Lockie Neal. I think he wins it with 31 votes, only just beaten Clayton Oliver. While he doesn't get as many disposals as Clayton Oliver does, typically, he can score goals, and I think his influence on the game is a little bit better than Clayton Oliver. Not as many handballs, he doesn't get the 40-plus disposal games, but that means they're not all junk possessions. So for me, Lockie Neal first, Clayton Oliver second, Andy Brayshaw for third, and then absolute daylight for fourth. I think Took Miller gets fourth on 24 votes. That's a long way from third, which is Andy Brayshaw at 28, four votes behind. Thanks for watching guys. This one has taken me quite a while to get this all together and I appreciate every single one of you that watches and so a massive thank you to you. Let's see how the brand low night goes. I'm probably gonna be wrong, but if I'm right, let's go. Come on, leave a like, subscribe. Thanks guys, see you next time.